Festac 77, the second World Black and African Festival of Arts and Culture held in Nigeria, brought together 15,000 participants from over 70 countries. At the official opening ceremony in the Lagos National Stadium, contingents from 47 countries paraded before government officials, visiting heads of state, and a capacity crowd of 100,000. The first contingent was from Ethiopia, which is to host the next festival. The aims of this festival were to revive and promote black and African cultural values and civilization, to illustrate the various contributions that black and African peoples have made to the universal currents of thought and the arts to foster better international and interracial understanding and to give black artists, writers and performers all over the world a feeling of belonging to a common route despite the diversity of their individual cultural identities. It was very striking on this first day to see just where the participants came from. From all over Africa, of course but also from the Pacific, from Europe, the West Indies, and the Americas. It was perhaps to the black communities of the diaspora, those peoples who have been uprooted to other continents, that the crowd gave its biggest and warmest welcome. The regatta has long been a popular entertainment among the peoples who live in the many river and delta areas of Nigeria. Originally employed for defensive purposes against invaders in the days of intertribal wars or for large-scale fishing expeditions, the traditional regatta is now a picturesque and colorful event held to celebrate special occasions such as the coronation of a new ruler or the visit of important dignitaries. It is also closely associated with religious rites, for example, funeral ceremonies for a chief or thanksgiving to the water gods after a particularly successful fishing expedition. But today, whatever the reason, the regatta offers an unforgettable spectacle for any visitor to Nigeria. And those attending Festac were treated to a dazzling display of waterborne music and color.
National Theatre in Lagos was the scene of many important events throughout the festival, including an international colloquium on the theme Black Civilization and Education, organized with the help of UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. At the ceremonial opening, Ifa priests, led by the Araba of Lagos, poured a libation and cast kola nuts for the success of the colloquium. The subject of the colloquium was a fast one, and during his opening address, the Nigerian head of state, General Obasanjo, approached the problem of black civilization and African languages, one of the ten sub-themes discussed by the delegates, and one very close to the underlying theme of education as a basis for development. The standing tragedy of all blacks and Africans, wherever they may be, said the head of state, is that their tongues have been pulled out and they must speak in strange tongues. To overcome this standing tragedy, we need to keep humility, patience, and painstaking dedication. It is my hope that all these attributes will go into our quest for knowledge about ourselves and our contribution to human knowledge and civilization. At the first meeting of the colloquium, attended by many distinguished scholars, artists, and thinkers, the Director General of UNESCO, Amadou Matambo, said that the theme to be debated represented one of the major contributions to the festival. Mr. Mbo went on. Son importance n'est pas grande pour l'Afrique, pour les pays I think it's an important theme for Africa and for those countries of the diaspora, our brothers and sisters from the West Indies and the American continent, as well as for all those other people in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific who present the same human and cultural characteristics or who quite simply have the same aspirations as the peoples of Africa. This festival is therefore of the greatest interest to UNESCO whose vocation it is to contribute to human progress and to forge stronger links of cooperation between all peoples while respecting the cultural identity of each and every one of them. The peoples of Nigeria are particularly proud of their cultural heritage and the Durba, organized as part of the festival at Kaduna in northern Nigeria, was an opportunity for the emirs of the north to display their richest traditions. The history of the Durba in northern Nigeria goes back as far as the 12th century, long before the Fulanese arrived in this part of Africa. It was originally a victory parade, but with the Fulanese, it became a ceremonial presentation to mark the enthronement of a new emir, or more recently, a way of paying tribute to very special visitors. Here then are a few moments of this colorful pageant representing the whole royalty of northern Nigeria.
leap across the centuries, from horse-born warriors to traffic flyovers, a leap of only a few hundred miles from Kaduna in the north to Lagos in the south, and then a further leap back into time, from the skyscrapers of Lagos to the National Museum, which during the festival presented an exhibition of 2,000 years of Nigerian art. Terracottas from the North culture, between 900 BC and 200 AD. Another terracotta head from the Ife culture between the 12th and 15th centuries. These pseudo bronzes date from the 16th century. The bronzes of Benin were made between the 15th and 19th centuries. Perhaps the most famous of all, the bronzes of Ife. Meanwhile, at various venues in and around Lagos, Festa continued with singing and music and films and drama, and above all, dancing. This is the Swaziland Dance Group. In complete contrast, a dance group from Libya. One of the largest art exhibitions at the festival came from Ethiopia and the section devoted to traditional Ethiopian art was particularly rich with Archbishop's regalia, manuscripts and precious icons. The Nigerian National Exhibition of Contemporary Visual Arts, here are two paintings by Chief Aino Onobolu, gave some idea of the variety of the country's artistic wealth. This is The Hunting Expedition by Charles Shainumi. Beauty and the Beast by Ben Enwawu. A bronzed lino relief by Bruce Onobrapeya. In 
in the international exhibition The Spirit of Apartheid, a work by a black Swedish painter, Harvey Cropper. An untitled work by Wilkerson of the United States. Community by Ongesa of Kenya. The Last Sound by Salahi of Sudan. A work by an Algerian artist, Benabura. Sun by Mendiv of Cuba. Big Bread by Stanley Greaves of Guyana. Daughters of Negus by Ossie Murray of Great Britain. And finally, from Kwasi Seitu Asante from the United States, Toussaint Louverture. The Trinidad and Tobago All-Stars, rehearsing at the Festival Village, where every night groups of performers found themselves putting on informal shows. It was perhaps here, on this level, more than in the formal surroundings of the theater and other official venues, that the participants, blacks and Africans from all over the world, came into direct contact with each other, mingling their cultures and traditions in one single common outburst of joy, the joy of finding each other and being together. Americans taking part in Festac, the National Black Theatre of Harlem, led by Barbara Ann Chair, gave perhaps the strongest impression of having come home. And this really got through to the audience, who at the end of this performance went up onto the stage to dance with their brothers and sisters from across the water, a fitting end to a festival which succeeded more than anything else in bringing people together. And there's a real you inside There you got to think of pride And that's the real Beautiful, beautiful. 
inside.